behind the scenes on the court on the floor, there ain't no friends. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We, we trying to, we going out there, we, we want blood, so. This is Danny Green, and you are listening to Inside the Green Room with myself and my co-host Harrison Sanford. Throughout the podcast, you'll hear about our life experiences from wins, NBA titles, NCAA championships, to the losses, being sent to the G League, overseas, and everything in between. Stay tuned. Welcome back into the third episode of Inside the Green Room with Danny Green. I'm the co-host Harrison Sanford. Yep. We got a big all-star coming on the show, but first and foremost, yeah. main star of the show. No stars here, man. <laughs> but yeah, we here. I'm here. You're a, you're a high quality role player. Yes, that's yeah. exactly. It. Here you go. <laughs> Does that work I, for I, you? I, I know my role. Yeah, I'm a, I like that. Okay. Quality role player. You know, well, your, your role coming up this upcoming season will also be as a spokesperson for the Toronto Raptors. I want to introduce you to something that came out last week, just right after, or oh, two weeks ago after we dropped the podcast. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brown from the Boston Celtics uh-huh. hopped on another podcast. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and he said... Whose podcast was it? It was CJ McCollum's. Oh, okay. It's not CJ. I like CJ, man. Big shout out to him. So I'm going to give you what Jalen Brown says, and I want to know what your immediate reaction is as okay. a competitor. He said, oh... We're getting to the finals. No <laughs> question about it. Yeah, I like his confidence, man. That's how he's supposed to think. Um, at the same time, that's how we're thinking as well. So that's another game. So the schedule just came out. It's one of the games we're looking forward to. I think everybody's looking forward to, mm-hmm. uh, especially if they're healthy. Um, it's be exciting to see Gordon Hayward back on the floor. But um, yeah, man, it's a, they're a great team. They should they should be thinking that. You know, LeBron left. They went seven games with them, and you know, Eastern Conference Finals. And they got everybody back, so why would why wouldn't he think that? But um, I, I think the squad that we have, it's gonna be interesting, man. I think we have a quite a bit to say about it when we step on the floor, so it'll be fun. From a competitor standpoint, does that kind of irk you? Like somebody just say no question? Nah, man. I've been in this game long enough to know, you know, how guys think, how guys talk, how they're supposed to think. Um, as much as we talk and say politically correct things in the media. Behind the scenes on the court on the floor, there ain't no friends. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We we trying to we going out there. We we want blood. So as much as he thinks that, we think the same. And we ain't gonna let anybody just walk over us or just think you know it's an easy path anyway. Regardless of who's out there, who's in the east and who's not. So um, I said it, it'll be fun. Moving on, there was uh, some other news. A former Spur, yeah. Bruce Bowen, who was yeah, it's my guy, man. He's a, he's one of the guys I looked up to. Reason why I'm kind of trying to get into that media area uh, of. I guess maybe after basketball, hopefully doing what he does. He's great at it, man. He has a lot of energy. I talked, chatted up with him quite a bit. I had a couple of plane rides with him. So, you know, that, that's my guy. He's one of the guys I've, I've definitely looked up to for some, some time now. Well, the good thing about having mentors and people you look up to, sometimes you can learn from their mistakes. <laughs> but, you know. Mistakes? <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't know if I would call it a mistake, but yeah. it's evident that the Clippers thought he made a mistake with his comments about Kawhi Leonard. His comments about Kawhi Leonard, the Clippers obviously going to be targeting him. Yeah, that, that's, that's, how, how did you how do you react to that whole situation where he's getting fired because that, of his that's comments? so crazy to me? Um, you know, for potential something next year, um, even then, I said that's part of his job is to you know have an sh- opinion, a strong opinion, give his analysis of a situation, you know, um, you know whatever it may be. Um, to fire a guy over that, you could easily just say, you know, tell him go on air, say sorry or apologize, or next year, you know, make sure that you have good terms with whoever we may bring in, or if we do bring in so-and-so next year, you know, you got to make sure this happens, but to fire him that early over some comments of, that's said part of his job, have an opinion, so it's kind of crazy to me, man, and he, he does his job, he does it very well, and, um, but, you know, I guess this day and age is how it goes sometimes. When you get onto your next part of your career, are you going to do the whole bow tie thing? I don't know, man. That was one of the things I did like about Bruce. Oh, wait. You're going to do the bow tie? I don't know if I'm going to do the bow tie, but I did like Bruce for the bow tie. That's the reason why. He had a swag. He did. He was different from everybody else, but that's one of the reasons why I did like Bruce because of the bow tie, but I I don't think it's me. Okay. Uh, What is you? Oh, what what the Raptors are rather yet yeah. are a team that's going to be featured on national television a lot this year. Fifteen national TV games, second most in franchise history since two thousand two thousand one. Well, that's going to be I said it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun when you bring in everybody wants to see what's going to happen with Kawhi. Obviously, mm-hmm. um, have you talked to Kawhi briefly? Oh, um, you did. Yeah, but well, we were there together for the uh, physical, so I got a chance. Oh, to you haven't talked to him since. No, no, no. So he's probably been in San Diego working out um, the team's had a little mini camps with the younger guys in LA is which I'm, I'm gonna do because I'm, I'm 
I feel like a rookie all over again where I'm starting behind the curve, still learning a system, learning an organization, learning everything all over. So I'm trying to get a jump on as much as possible to give myself an edge. So, um, Have you talked to Kyle? No, I haven't talked to Kyle Lowry, but I know Kyle from growing up. Played against him in high school. Um, Philly guy. Uh, you know, he's a bull. So, uh, man, I already know he's competitive. And he's going to be a, a big piece and a reason why, why we're going to be successful this year. So, um, I'm looking forward to that, man. I'm looking forward to building that relationship and that friendship with him. Is that a like a common thing where it's just like you guys, I mean, you guys are going to be on the road all year long. Is mm-hmm. it kind of just like, hey, man, it's the summer. We'll link up when we'll link up. We'll for talk sure. we'll talk. Well, that, that's how it is. But when you've been together, but this is new for me. It's a new team. But most guys that have been together on the same team for some years. It's like, all right, we see you enough throughout the year, throughout the summertime. You know, if I see you in the same city, we'll, we'll hit you, say what's up, like link up. But other than that, it's like everybody's with their families doing their own thing. It's, it's the break. And you only get about two months, really, away from the guys. Because after that, guys are back to working out. Guys are back in the gym, back in the city. So, um, yeah, the guys don't really try to schedule times to be like, all right, let's do this, let's do that as much in the summer as they do during the year. We're going to have a guest on the show later mm-hmm. who's putting out a new album. Yeah. Right? And it got, and it's like a club album, it's like a party album. So it got me thinking, and this is like our listeners' favorite part of the show. It's like when you start telling these stories. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. So I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> The origin, I mean, you danced when you were at North Carolina, okay, okay. right? And then you did you did the dance with, with LeBron when you were at the cast. Yeah, that was... And uh, Joakim Noah didn't like that, by the way. And I want to know that course, story, too. Of course, I know he did. I know he did. I mean, I was a rookie. I was dumb. The vets made me do it. Oh, they made you dance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to do what the vets make you do on the sideline. Obviously, it was during a timeout. Wrong time of game. Wrong yeah. time of... You know, to do be dancing on the sidelines uh, against a team, so you're, they're still playing, and we're I guess time is scoring. It was like fourth quarter, and you guys were like dancing in front of Joe yeah, Kinoa. Yeah, I think we were up pretty pretty <laughs> big too, so it seemed like we were climbing around. So it wasn't very smart. But, Wait, uh, who, who egged you on? Was it like LeBron come dance with me? Like all of, all the I guys, want full man. details. All the guys were there. I know Shaq was there. Shaq made me do a lot of things that got me in trouble. Um, but so my rookie, year, I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot of what to do and what not to do from those guys. And um, were but you it, was, like, it was all fun and games. Were you like, nah, don't like, I'm not doing this. Like, was there any hesitation on your part? Because uh, joke, well, you I wasn't know playing. Joking. Yeah, I wasn't playing. Um, and I was really th- as, a, as a rookie, you were only thinking of the situation, time yeah. and score, and you don't think about the other team. At that moment, with that team, we were just having fun everywhere we went. They, they were just a, a lot of characters. So, and you're not playing. You're on the sideline. You just want to be involved and get involved. So, you know, it wasn't. You know anything that I was, I wasn't trying to make Joe mad. I wasn't thinking of it. I really wasn't paying he was attention. Tight. But um, yeah, man. So a lot of the guys were like, yo, this is, you better get in there, Rook. Go ahead and get. So I, you know, I jumped in and started dancing. But it was started in Carolina. It was wasn't just an individual thing. Um, it was a team thing. It was a group thing. And Coach Williams used to play the music for every game. And he, if you didn't know Coach Williams, he's a little superstitious. Huh. So. Um, and we would play it for every game, and we won quite a few home games the years that we did, you know, play the music, and then I was on the sideline dancing, and there was one game that they actually didn't play the music. They forgot to play the music, and I think we lost in, like, double overtime. I think ever since then, they made sure they played that damn song, <laughs> and that we were on the sideline dancing. What was it, like, dancing. jump around, get yeah, around, yeah. jump around, jump right? Around, man. Yeah. The old, old song, so, yeah. <laughs> so. Well, we're going to keep the music uh, as a theme of the show as we welcome our next guest. Stay tuned to Inside the Green Room with Danny Green. This is Danny Green, Inside the Green Room. Make sure to follow us on all social media. On Instagram, we are at Inside Green Room. On Twitter, we are Green Room Inside. Also, if you want to hear your questions answered in our mailbag, shoot us an email at InsideDGreenRoom at gmail.com. Once again, inside d green room at gmail.com that's green like the color with no e at the end you never know you just might want a gift from me or one of our guests until then let's get back to the podcast welcome back to inside the green room with danny green i'm your co-host harrison sanford we have our nba all-star coming up in our next segment but there is some big news in the world of sports and it is our pleasure to welcome in two guests. I'll introduce the first one, Matt Finkus, former Ohio State yeah. legend and also a host for the pregame and postgame show, The Football Fever, in Columbus, Ohio. Matt, how's it, doing? how's it going? I'm doing good here. Weather in the storm in Columbus. Welcome, Matt. Thanks for joining us on the show, man. Really appreciate you taking the time out. Um, yeah, thanks today. for having me, guys. Um, also, with the, we have another former Ohio State Buckeye, current. Pittsburgh Steelers, Phil, uh, my man Ryan. JZ, how you doing, man? How's things going? Hey, how, how y'all guys doing? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Uh, Thank you for having me. 
Well, I'm glad we got both of y'all on the line, man. We had a couple of questions and updates. I, was, I used to play football back in the day. I haven't been in touch with it as much as I used to. Um, so follow it as well. I've been updated with the news. So uh, we're obviously going to get into that a little later. But uh, Ryan's going to ask, how's the body hold up, man? How's, how you doing? How's the, it looks like you're doing real well, man, walking pretty good. So just update us with what's going on with that. Hey, man, everything is going good. You know, first and foremost, I just want to thank God. Uh, he constantly uh, working in my favor. And, but uh, I, I'm just uh, – I'm doing better every day, man. I'm working my tail off. I'm, in, I'm literally doing rehab twice a day, pretty much every day. Uh, you know, and I'm just really uh, – I'm just I'm just grinding, man. Sometimes it's, 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 some days are a little tougher than others. But uh, I'm, I'm I'm getting uh, better every day. Uh, you know, a lot of people see me walking recently, and I'm, I'm doing more rehab so I can start walking a lot more and just being able to to uh, you know be able to get back to where I want to be soon. So, so well, it's showing, man. I said it's a beautiful sight to see you out there, man, walking on the field. Every time I see it, man, it makes I'm sure a lot of people it makes everybody smile, man. So uh, I'm glad to see you you're in better spirits. Glad to see you're in better health. I know you're working to get back to where you want to be. Um, you got a baby on the way. Uh, congratulations. Um, tell us how that process is coming along, uh, you know, with you know everything else going on. Hey, man, it's just really exciting. You know, I already have a, a, a son right now, but uh, just to know we have another one on the way, it's very exciting to show you the household. You know, me and Michelle, this is going to be our first child together, so it, it's, it's going to be a very special moment, and we're really looking forward to it. So Ryan, I know that you're. I know Ryan, you're attempted to come back uh, to the NFL. Matt uh, was played for the Jets for a while, but had to deal with uh, injury issues of his own. Matt, when you see Ryan's battle to get back in the league, uh, considering the injury that happened last year during that Monday Night Football game against the Bengals, what are your impressions, and, and what would you say to Ryan in his situation trying to get back to the league? Well, I mean, I think that you know, obviously. Ryan's, you know, inspiring just to see him walking again, you know, is, is a positive thing. I mean, you know, I was on the field in 1990, man. It wasn't too long ago. Now, I think. It wasn't too long ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago when, uh, you know, when, when Reggie Brown was paralyzed on the field in the Lions game. Um, you know, that was our last final game of the season. Uh, and, and I know that how that felt just being on the field when that happened. So, you know, seeing Ryan up and, and moving and walking and, you know, just being able to get about his normal life uh, is inspiring. And, you know, I, I know he and his dad are, are, are both working hard, and I'm sure the entire family is just, you know, trying to make progress and make every day a little bit better. Ryan, what do you say to, what do you say to those people who say that you shouldn't be attempting to come back to the NFL, that, uh, that you should be grateful that you've played already and that you shouldn't be risking injury again? Uh, so basically, I was saying uh, the people, the people that uh, that that saying that right now, I feel like are the same people that want to go out there and play football in the first place. Uh, honestly, uh, me playing football is probably like with Danny playing basketball. It's a feeling that you really can't get nowhere else, and it's it, you've been we've been playing it all our life. So I just have a love mm-hmm. of the game, and For and sure. honestly, uh, I honestly feel if you really feel like you. Uh, want to do something and you really can achieve it why not try why not try and get back to where you can be so I really feel whenever you give everything you got you give everything you have to try to be where you want to be and that's what I'm doing so that's big mentally that's, that's just having that mental courage to try to get back out there and do that so I'm, I'm sure everybody's everybody's rooting for you they want to see you I, I want to see you back out on the field man and we know we all know you can do it um, and I said it starts with having that mentality I think you're on the right path right now. We were going to talk about the NFL later on with Ryan, but Ryan and Matt was part of the reason why you're here as well. Both of you guys went to Ohio State, and obviously with the news coming down with Urban Meyer being suspended uh, for three games and the athletic director, Gene Smith, getting suspended as well into mid-September. Matt, what was your reaction to the initial issue that was happening at Ohio State? And then, Ryan, I'll let you follow after him. Well, I mean, obviously, it's a it's a serious issue. I mean, when you talk about domestic violence, and then you talk about uh, you know some of the other things that came out in the report late last night, um, you know, obviously, everything is, is is very serious in nature and needs to be looked at. Um, I, I think that the important thing to remember, even today, as it was when this investigation started, is it's going to be really hard. But but the, 
the people need to, to check emotion at the door and look at what the facts are of this case. I mean, you, you're sure. talking about people's livelihoods. You're talking about people's, uh, you know, careers. You know, you're talking about people's lives. Uh, so so you sure. need to be very firm in what the facts are in this case. Um, you know, I was surprised that, that the suspension happened. I, I, I thought Urban Meyer would, uh, you know, have kind of time served, maybe have a fine and lose those three weeks of pay. Um but, you know, when you, again, the, the university and the investigation found that all the reporting uh, as far as the domestic violence allegations in 2015 were handled correctly by himself and by Gene Smith. It seems like the suspension came more of out of the idea of, you know, Zach Smith had, had kind of a poor job performance or had some red flags that came up that came out in the investigation. Now, what Urban Meyer knew about those transgressions. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like he knew that much. It, it, it seems like he knew about, you know, Zach in 2016, uh, you know, maybe going into a substance abuse program. Um, it doesn't seem like he knew about the, the text messages or the, the, you know, the the more the poor optics things, the things that were being delivered to the Woody Hayes. So, again, that's why I kind of felt like the, um, you know, they, they overreached a little bit as far as Ohio State and in, in, in handing down the suspension. And maybe it was a little bit more of, optics and public relations rather than it was policy. And I think that's a slippery slope that you go down as a university to, to set a precedent that, you know, contractually Urban Meyer, and they stated this, contractually Urban Meyer did everything he was supposed to and within his power as the head football coach, but we expected him to do more and now we're going to suspend him because he didn't go over and above what he was contractually obligated to do. That from a legal standpoint, and when you're talking about finding a guy and taking away six weeks of his pay, which is almost nine hundred thousand dollars, man, that that's a slippery slope to go down. And um, you know, I, I think that when you look at this from a from a media perspective, Ohio State didn't do itself any favors either. You know, this is a, a now a PR nightmare that's going to go on for probably another five weeks until Urban Meyer is back on the sidelines, and maybe even then, if you kind of end this tomorrow and say, hey, we're we're finding him, we're going to reinstate him after this three week suspension, and he's back to work. Yeah, it, you're going to take some some heat for it, but it's going to be over in about a week and a half. So, um, a lot of a lot of things to digest there still in it. But again, you know, I think Ryan will probably be able to talk to a little bit more about how maybe this team is going to react. He's been there with uh, with Urban and how he coaches and how he affects teams, and and I think this team is going to be just fine. Well, that's a hell of an answer there, Matt. Uh, I don't know how Ryan will follow up, but Ryan, do you have any thoughts on? Like yeah, uh, yeah, I'm about to say, uh, yeah, I'm about to say, I don't know how I can follow up on that one, but uh, he touched all bases, man. Good job. Man. <laughs> yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he touched all bases. I've, I've been doing this all day. I'm kind of used to it at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He touched all bases, but uh, honestly, uh, I know the team uh, is just the way that Coach Meyer is a coach and the, the staff that he normally has around him. That uh, that everything is going to be just fine. Everybody understood the expectations that Coach Meyer has and the coaches have. So when he comes back around, everybody understands that well. Uh, they need to be they need to be acting just as if he was there. So uh, I don't think the team is going to have any change in performance. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you still need your head coach to make the you know the tough calls and games and the tough decisions and play calls. But uh, I honestly feel like they're, they're going to do a great job. I think everything's going to be fine. Honestly, I'm actually happy that uh, Coach Meyer, uh, like like I said, I, I haven't looked into everything, but I, I'm, I'm actually happy that Coach Meyer still has his job because, you know, some people were saying that he might lose his job and all type of things like that. So I'm just happy to see that uh, that he's still able to, to, to have his job and, and, and I'm glad to see that he took care of everything the, the right way and the way he should have. So, you know, Urban is obviously known as a great recruiter. How do you think that impacts, you know, you guys, Ohio State University's abilities, you know, in that aspect? Um, how much do you think that impacts or changes it? You know, at, at the end of the day, I think Coach Meyer is going to be a great recruiter. I think the only thing that's going to suck now is uh, or that's going to hurt now is that he's going to have to do a better job of explaining to every single parent or yeah. every single – every single recruit about the situation that has happened. And then mm-hmm. and he's already have a, a, a great uh, wide receiver coach in a uh, hard line right now. So everybody understands that they're not going to have the same problem with the, the coach that was there, but he's going to have to always 
answer to that that the situation that he's in now with the parents and and yeah. trying to make sure their kids is in the right environment. So, but he's always he's always been a great recruiter. He, he, he had me uh he had me going to Florida before I, uh before I uh, decommitted and I'm going to Ohio State and look I'm still having him. So and uh-huh. so he helped me get to where I'm at and and he has a, a track record of helping guys get to the next level and helping them win championships or or be very successful. So. Um, I think uh, people are going to understand his resume and see what he can do, and I think that that's going to help out. For sure. The day. For sure. It's crazy how that's, like, tied to, like, Coach Mintz, even Val Gates being out of Carolina, how much I'm sure he had excellent. Like, even I, people asking me questions about what's going on, what's going to happen. I'm sure he had explained everything to every player, but with his resume, like you said, and how good of a recruiter they are, they should be okay. But, um, you know, I was just wondering if there was much of a big difference with the football than basketball when it comes to certain – Things or allegations and recruitment. It's interesting, right? Because no side here is happy uh, technically about the punishment that has been laid down by uh, the board of trustees and President Drake over at Ohio State. That happens with everything, man. It happens with everything. And every type of situation that happens is always, is never in between. Say, oh, that's fair. Nobody's going to say, oh, that, that's fair. There's a lot of people say, oh, that's not enough for us. And people say, that's way too many. There's never like a, a middle ground. Yeah, people that actually yeah, you, agree yeah. That. There seems to be a sentiment from the national media that Urban, uh, during his press conference last night, had a couple of missteps. Uh, One of them being just he didn't seem too attentive, having reporters ask the same question multiple times. Uh, There was the instance where he didn't mention Courtney Smith's name, neither he or Gene Smith. And then uh, I think the most damning thing, and Matt, I'm going to ask you to speak about this, that came up from the 23-page investigation result was the fact that Urban Meyer apparently seemed to have deleted text messages that were older than a year in his phone after the Big Ten media days in Chicago. What's the reaction to in Columbus uh, when it comes to those more damning articles that were revealed in the investigation report and the press conference last night, Matt? Well, I, I think when you look at the press conference, um, one thing that I know for certain was Urban Meyer was pissed. And that's what you saw. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and he was uh, he was angry at the outcome. Um, he was fighting in, in that room for 10 hours. That he didn't believe he warranted a suspension, and that was his stance. And, and he was very adamant about that. So um, the decision that was finally agreed upon and, and come to, which is kind of a compromise, I, I think, when you look at how the suspension is laid out, you know, he's off until September 2nd and then can coach during the week, but not during games. Uh, you know, so I feel like that was a bit of a compromise as well. You know, so he was angry. I mean, make no mistake about it. He was angry. He felt justified that he had done all the right things that, okay, maybe I, I should have, uh, you know, I had a reason to fire his action before and I didn't do it, but that's not a, you know, a suspendable offense in his mind. So he, he was mad. And so I think that's why you got kind of the disconnect and, having the reporters, uh, you know, repeat questions. If you go back to some of those tough losses, uh, you know, the Michigan State loss and the Iowa loss last year, that, that's how he kind of reacts in press conferences when he's angry. <laughs> and, and, and that's, I think, what you saw last night. Um, the Courtney Smith issue, I think, is interesting because there's there's going to be a lot more that comes out about this. Uh, you know, I mean, sure. there's, a, there's a trial that's coming up. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there, there's a lot of testimony that's going to be coming up, uh, mm-hmm. you know, on both sides of this issue. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think that it's okay not to get involved in that. I think he should have not gotten involved and mentioned anything in mm-hmm. the first place. I mean, that's a, that's someone else's marriage and that's between those two yeah. people and that's in the court of law that's, now. And, and that's, that's where it needs business. to be handled. That, that's sure. where it needs to be handled, not in the court of public opinion. So I'm fine with that as well. Um, you know, the, the other parts of it kind of here and there, um, I, again, I, I think that, you know, urban is the guy he, he is, you know, there, there's some, things in that report that kind of came out that were, you know, a little bit strange and and you don't know kind of why those pieces and parts were in there. Uh, I guess, you know, you got to justify spending a half million dollars in two weeks somehow. So so you get a bunch of information. They definitely put Um, them, they definitely put that group to work. Yeah, they, they, they put that group to work. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, Harrison, what was the third part of your question? Yeah, I, I guess it, I guess it, it just pertains to the deleting of text messages. And we, we oh, talked, the deleting of text yes, messages. Yes, it just, it just doesn't it's, seem like a, a thing that would portray 100% innocence or 100 like it's not the, It's not something that's favorable for Urban Meyer or the football program. 
Yeah, I mean, but, but if you look on the flip side of that, okay, he deleted text messages over a year ago. There were still 10,000 text messages that they went through over the mm. past year. 10,000 uh, text messages. And everybody um, deletes text in that. So yeah. yeah, I mean, there, there's people that delete text messages as soon as they get them on their phone, as soon as they read them. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. obviously with the amount of people that Urban stays in touch with as far as recruits and high school coaches, um, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. is it bad optics yeah. again? Is it something <laughs> actionable? No. Is it bad optics? Maybe the way you look at it. I mean, that's just one of those things where I think when you look at this report, it's again, it's important to kind of remove the speculation and the emotion aside from, okay, what are the actual facts of this matter? I mean, the guy turned over a year of his text messages. All this was happening over the course of this past year, you know, over, you know, June and July. If there's something incriminating, it's going to be on there at that time. So the news about Zach, um, did that come as a surprise to you, uh, Ryan? Uh, if you let us know that you knew him, uh, that how well you knew him, what you knew about him, and the stuff that's coming out now, does that shock you, or does that seem like kind of how he was, who he was, type of type of deal? Yeah, like I, I'm gonna be honest, though, that, that kind of shocked me. But you, you, I always kind of felt that Coach Smith was a different character than everybody else, uh-huh. you know, and. Uh, and but I'm not saying it like in a, a, a crazy a way, way. But you probably know how coaches are. I just mm-hmm. feel like out of all the coaches, I feel like he was the one that was a little bit different than everybody else. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, like he, yeah, he just I don't know. It, I don't know. Sometimes it just felt like he wanted to be a like a, a, a players a players coach too much. Sometimes, yeah. you know, so he was really yeah. involved and cool with the players and hanging out. Yeah, you know I mean. That's yeah, the yeah. At the same time, but still, you didn't really never know anybody as well as you think you do. So they said some of this news comes out, and you're like, "Wow!" So right, yeah, because yeah, you because the thing is, you, you just never know what's going on in somebody else's house. Exactly. It is. So it, it, it's always a shock when you find out something like this is going on. Because the other day, I, I've grown up that 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 is absolutely uh, uh, frowned upon. Is you know, hitting women and, and, and uh, domestic violence. And, you know, and things like that. So, you know, I, I just I thought it was uh, it, it definitely caught me off guard when I found out about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I'll let you guys go on about your day, Ryan. Best of luck. Uh, yeah. With the, with the new with the newborn going back into the NFL. Yeah, uh, give me a quick. I'll Looking let forward to meeting them. Yep. I'll give. I'll ask before we go. Let me get a quick prediction from Ryan on the Steelers results for the end of the season and then matt give me a quick prediction on the ohio state football season then we'll let you guys go i feel like we can win the super bowl i feel like we have all the pieces i know it kind of mm-hmm. sucked that i'm not gonna be out there on the field but i feel like all the guys on defense are definitely gonna uh stand up i know uh we have some surprises for everybody this season and i know coach Tom and, and uh, uh the defense we all uh we all doing all the extra little pieces for what we need to do but I, I think sure. we have, I think we have everything that, that, that we need to, to make it to a Super Bowl run. We just have to focus on football, you know. And, and, yeah. and I think that's gonna make us, that's gonna really get us to the next level. And and that's how you're supposed to think, man. I mean, first start from day one. I, I believe we should go 82 and up. You know, I see these young guys yeah. playing well. You're supposed to think that. You don't tell people that in the public. I don't put that pressure on us or our young guys. But um, I think we you might have just did though, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, nah, no pressure, no pressure. Every team, every no, but, season, uh, they uh, go eighty-two and zero. But I said most people give you the, what they think and then their predictions. Like, all right, I predict that we can. Yeah. This is what we hope to do. This is what we po- possible. Is we're capable of doing. We're definitely capable yeah. of making the NBA finals. Uh, it's definitely Eastern Conference finals. So, um, those are the things that we predict. But in our mind, we want to think like, all right, should we want to go into? We can. We can copy. Get yeah, a few. Yeah, I think I'm going undefeated until somebody's missing. <laughs> <laughs> a little harder with 82 games, but you guys, you guys can definitely do it. Matt, I'm yeah, it. so sure. You know, <laughs> Matt, if you can give us your predictions for the Ohio State season, then we'll all go our separate ways. Yeah, you know, I, I think that uh, this, this is obviously an interesting turn of events here to start the season off. But uh, super talented football team. Uh, you know, defense is going to be an elite level defense again. The defensive line uh, has looked great uh, here so far. In the uh, in, pre- in preseason camp here, uh, offensive line is coming together. Still a little bit of shuffling, but man, I'll tell you what's going to be interesting is how this offense uses the backs that they have in Mike Weber and J.K. Dobbins. I mean, they're probably two of the best backs 
actually probably 1A and 1B in the Big Ten mm-hmm. as far as running backs. I mean, how they use those that. guys and how they ride those guys and that let Dwayne Haskins kind of settle into the role uh, of making a little bit more high percentage throws and not trying to force things in with his arm, I think is, is going to tell the tale. Obviously, big game at TCU in week three uh, in Dallas. Penn State's going to be good. Nebraska is going to be an improved football team. Uh, you know, Michigan State, I think, is going to re- rebound. But um, th- this is another chance for Ohio State to, to make a run, I think. I mean, the, the talent that Urban Meyer brings in again and again, uh, it, it's tough to argue with. And once you get those guys playing and gelling at the right time, and then, you know, Ryan knows this as well, this, this adversity at the beginning of the season, uh, Urban Meyer is going to use this. And he's going oh, to use sure. it to his full advantage. His teams play best when it's it's the him against the world mentality. I mean, you go back to 2014 in that national championship when no one believed they should have been in the in the playoffs to begin with, and you know they just took that to another level. And that's when Urban coaches best. That's when his teams play best. And this little uh, you know the, this media and, and 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 suspension here at the beginning of the season might be just fuel to this this Buckeye team fired to, to get them rolling. One thing is for sure. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State Buck, the Ohio State Buckeyes will be on the eyes of the nation as the season continues, oh, sure. and the eyes will also be on Ryan Shazier as well as he continues his battle back to the field. Uh, guys, I want to thank you for coming on, and uh, we'll hope yeah, to really see you through the season. No yeah, problem. thanks for having thank me, man. Having us, man. Having All right, be and good, guys. I got, I got to run. I got to go do another interview. Yep. <laughs> Have a wonderful All weekend, man. See, see you guys. <laughs> see you guys later, man. Bye bye. All right. All right. Yeah, man, it's great to have those guys on. Such a great group, man. Um, I think they had some good input. I think Matt had some really good, great things to say about OSU. Um, I think they really are going to put a chip on their shoulder. But um, I know there's more headlines we need to discuss, so Harris, I know you bring some topics up. I know there's probably some things I don't want to discuss, but go ahead, man. Shoot your shot. Shoot <laughs> well, your shot. Ask your questions about what, what you're hearing about. I'm I'm a king at shooting my shot, Danny. I'm a king at doing shooting my shot. Uh, oh, I, oh, I know. I know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a story for a later day. Uh, first and foremost, uh, <laughs> Raptors hired Jeremy Castleberry, a uh, friend of Kawhi Leonard, and obviously he was with the Spurs. What's your reaction to Toronto making that move, and how will that impact potentially Kawhi thinking about staying in Toronto past this year, and how does that possibly impact you as well? Well, Jerem, Jerem's my guy, man. Um, everybody loves Jerem. He's great at what he does. He's amazing. Obviously, it'll make Kawhi feel more comfortable at home. I'm not shocked by it. Um, I'd be more shocked if he actually stayed in San Antonio because you know, he's one reason why he came into you know his first organization was with Kawhi. But you know, he's earned his keep. He you know interned. He became the video room video guy, ball boy, did all the stuff that he needed to do, um, learned the game, figured out what he needed to do, and he says he's been great ever since, even in San Antonio. So. Um, I don't think there's any possible way for him to continue to stay in San Antonio while Kawhi was gone. I'm sure they would have probably crucified him there. Uh, not the staff or anything, but, you know, just the fans, the people, because everybody knew that, you know, Jerem was Kawhi's right-hand guy. So, um, but, um, you know, I, when I heard the news, when I asked him, I asked him a couple weeks ago, like, are you coming with us? And he's like, yeah, I'm coming through. And so I wasn't shocked that he was hired or surprised. They announced it some days later or whatever, but, you know, it was good to have him on board. Uh, so hopefully it keeps, it helps Kawhi feel more comfortable at home. Um, it keeps him, you know, and the city that they wanted to keep him here. Obviously, they traded for him for a reason. They think they could sell him. I think the city that the Canadians are, Canada itself is a beautiful place. And Canadians are beautiful people. It's an amazing city in Toronto. Um, so the city sells itself. So it's hard to kind of, you know, still want to leave that place after this, like being in that country, being in that city. Um, so and now you have your best friend with you. Uh, you know, what else could what else could you ask for? Yeah, Toronto's not a bad place to have your best friends with. I gotta, I gotta work on some travel for this NBA season to make that happen. Um, for sec- sure, for sure. Second and last question before we get to our NBA All Star guest in the next segment. Adrian Wojnarowski had a report in regards to Manu Ginobili potentially considering retirement, according to his report. Uh, obviously, you've seen Manu Ginobili working out this oh, off season. Sure. What was your reaction to hearing that he's considering retirement? And if I had to ask you if he was more likely to retire or more likely to come back, what would you say? Um, I mean, he's 41 now. So, you know, obviously it's got to come up. He was working out in the sense of he's one of those guys that takes care of his body very well, regardless if he's playing or not. So, um, you know, obviously there's a discussion that was going to come up uh, eventually. Uh, still, I mean, to that 41 sooner than later. But, um, I mean, I couldn't predict or give you uh, where his mind might be at, but I think the, the fact that the organization is changing, they have a lot of young guys there, 
him having to, not saying he has to start over, but a lot of guys, a lot of people that he's been around for the last, you know, well, shit, with Tony, he's been with Tony for 16 years. And then, you know, Timmy retired on him. Um, you know, me and Kawhi are gone now. Kyle's gone. A couple of guys that he's been around, he said Patty's there as left and LaMarcus. Um, I would, I would say, you know, he's probably thinking about it a little more and trying to let those young guys, you know, kind of groom or kind of just come into their own. And obviously, he can still, he'll probably still be around helping the coaching and stuff like that. So I'm sure all those things will come into discussion when he talks to Pop and thinking about his retirement, whether, you know, he feels that they really need him. If they really need him, they'll come back. Um, but, you know, Pop really wants these young guys to kind of get their feet wet, get out there and kind of learn their own. Um, you know, he might not need him. I think he'd, he'd probably, you know, hang him up. So it'll be interesting to see. And regardless, you know, I'm still rooting for the guy. Love the guy, his family. And, um, you know, been an honor to play alongside him for the last, if, if it's his last season, definitely the last year of his career and the last six, seven years, seven, seven and a half years actually now. Um, yeah, so, you know, I was glad to call him a friend and family member now. So it's, he had a great career. It's just been an honor. So, you know, I wish him the best of luck. Uh, looking forward to his decision. But regardless of the decision, I'm still rooting for him, whether I'm playing against him or not. You know, I'm still happy to be a part of you know his career. Danny, you weren't there when he snatched that bat out of the air, right? You weren't there. No, I was not there. He, he's told the story bat, though, right? There, yeah. Okay, but he's told the story uh, yeah. about it. Yes, he's told me. He told me about <laughs> the story briefly. Um, you know, he's fearless, man. That's just a, a small example of how fearless Manu is. But um, you know, he's big in the animal world and kingdom exploring and trying new things and doing that. So, you know, that's him. And he's, he plays that way too. And that's why he's such a great, it's been, he's why he's a great a Hall of Fame. We'll have he's to, arguably the top, top five shooting guards in the history of the game. So We'll have to get that full bat story, either from you or from Manu in the near future. I at least hope that if he does retire, <laughs> he plays for one game and shows off that Euro step which has truly changed uh, the NBA. Yeah, man, he's a he's he's a pioneer, man. He's the originator, so he definitely should have a, a statue with him doing that Euro step somewhere in San Antonio. So. Somewhere in San Antonio, somewhere in the Basketball yeah. Hall of Fame as well. Danny, thanks. Oh, for sure. We'll be back for the next segment. Listeners, make sure you stay tuned. We have a fun interview coming up in our next segment. This is Inside the Green Room with Danny Green. Music for Inside the Green Room is provided on behalf of The Cut Buddy, the number one best-selling beard and haircut tool as seen in GQ, Forbes, and on Shark Tank. Give their website a visit at thecutbuddy.com. Welcome Inside the Green Room with Danny Green. Episode 3. We have a big-time guest here, Danny. A two-time All-Star here at Basketball City at the MBPA basketball camp. Then I'll let you do the introduction to our guest on Vonner. Oh man, uh, this guy's come a long way, of course. Um, I don't know if people know his story, but uh, UConn alum. Um, Sir. Uh, yeah, <laughs> new addition, a new artist to the new game artist? now. Appreciate Probably it. about to go triple platinum. <laughs> it's only right. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. about to hit the hot 16 for us when we in the, in the booth today. <laughs> can, we drop a, uh, can we drop a beat and you gonna hit a freestyle for us? I, I hit the beatbox real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm but yeah, we got my, my boy Dre Drummond in the building. So yeah, yeah. welcome, so, brother. So, welcome, so, welcome. So, so good to be here. I'm currently multitasking right now, but like, signing <laughs> autographs and talking at the same time. Yeah, so. we appreciate you coming out, man, taking the time. Good yeah, here. for sure. So you're here at the MBPA camp. Obviously, you used to be a younger hooper. What are you trying to do here, accomplish here as uh, an all-star in the game of basketball? Yeah, you know, just to be here and uh, let these kids know that I'm not too big to come to these kinds of camps to shed light of uh, what I went through as a kid their age to get to where I'm at. And uh, just they're very receptive of what I say. They listen to everything. And uh, it's really, really cool to just see some kids I've seen last year back here again and how much they've grown. Danny can't really work out too hard, right, because he's coming off the grind injury. But Danny, oh, I'm back now though. I'm back now. I'm back. Oh, okay, nice. Welcome back. Welcome nice. back. Well, welcome back. Well, welcome it, back. Appreciate it. Danny, there's been some workouts going on in Miami. I'm sure you know about them. I've heard. The I got to get down workouts. there at some point, man. I got to get down there at some point. Yeah, I'm down there. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> so, from what I understand, people like Victor Oladipo are at the camp. John Wall, Dwayne Wade, Terry Rozier. Yeah. Uh, who do you see? Uh, who that you've been working out with down there that's really improved their game? I think uh, outside of basketball, Jalil Okafor has done a great job of taking care of his body. Uh, I've seen him 
last week before I came on here, and he looks he looks incredible. Uh, there was a picture that went up recently from the day he started till today, and uh, he looks fantastic. I think basketball wise, um, Terry Rozier looks great as usual. Uh, John Wall looks great. Uh, D Wade is down there doing his thing. Mm-hmm. You already know what the Flash does. Uh, other than that, I think everybody that I've seen so far looks really, really good. We work we work with the same guys, so we've seen them every day. I get to see everybody's progress. Jaleel just signed with New Orleans, didn't he? He signed with New Orleans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Danny, as somebody who went through tri- trials and tribulations with your first team trying to get playing time, yeah. and now Jaleel's probably going to get a chance here to, to rediscover his game, how impactful you know, is that first team? Man. Obviously, Dre's had it a bit easier. For sure. It's not, it, it's, timing is everything, you know, and uh, especially as a, depending on what situation you go into, a, a, a guy like uh, him, I think his first situation wasn't ideal, wasn't the greatest spot for him. Uh, going in, you know, so he didn't get a lot of playing time. He didn't really get groomed. He didn't really have uh, many vets to groom him. So I think in New Orleans, go ahead, yeah, yeah. So I think <laughs> in, in New Orleans, I think he's got, you know, he got AD over there now. It's going to help him a lot. Um, mm-hmm. He's got, you know, Gentry over there. They got a nice little system. So I think he'll get a chance and a really good opportunity to show what he's capable of doing, you know, this year, uh, being in that system. So uh, it, it said it's all timing. It's all system-wise what fits you. What, and right now, said, I don't think he's been able to show. Um, the potential and how good he really is uh, up until this point. So I think this year will be a, a good year for him. Dre, you, you, you played against Jaleel Okafor. You played yep. against Jerlins Noel. I remember your high school class yeah. and the guys were Isaiah Austin. That was, um, a fun, that was a fun class. Indeed. So you said you thought they did Jaleel dirty. In, in, in what sense? I mean, I'm going to keep it... Uh, you can keep on with Virginia. Keep, keep it political, but... Uh, yeah, I understand. I, understand. <laughs> I, think, I just think uh, he didn't get a fair chance. I think when he did play in the games he played in, he had nothing less than 20 points, and he was very efficient from the field. I just think uh, when Joel came back, I just think they just threw him under the bus and just ran with that train. Obviously, Joel is doing what he's doing now, granted, but I think uh, they could have figured a way to implement him in their system. For sure, for sure. I think it's all about timing and opportunity. A lot of times, you, everybody, I feel like, gets an opportunity. There's so many games in the season, guys mm-hmm. get hurt. Um, it's about what you do with that opportunity. I think he took advantage of it, but I don't think he made a, a, a big enough. It's, it's, it's tough when you're first early, early on years and you're not established to make a, a big enough statement, you know, put a, your stamp in and be like, all right, you know what, we got to play this guy 25 minutes a game. But um, I said he did, he did decently, but, you know, so I think this year he'll have a – I think he'll figure it out. Yeah, for sure. Dre, you made your stamp in the game already. Big, one of the best big men of the league. What I want to know, and you referenced Joel Embiid. He had some comments for you earlier this season, <laughs> talking about you can't you can't shoot and things of that nature. Are you in the lab working on the three pointer? What are you What are you doing now with these Remy workouts? You know, in Miami? you know, uh, with that, with that, you know, everybody's gonna talk. I mean, that's what he does. He's a clown, man. He, just, <laughs> <laughs> he talks all day, but obviously he backs it up with his play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's fun guy, I have nothing negative to say about him. Uh, with my work, I was talking about me now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've worked on a little bit of everything, and obviously worked on my post game, worked on the free throws, which is the biggest thing I've worked on and improved on in my past year. Uh, and just obviously with the shooting as well, too, trying to get more consistent with it, because I do have to expand my game, because the game is changing. For sure, I was about to get into that. And seeing, you know, from your perspective, what things you think you need to do in order to adjust and adapt to that. You know, everybody's playing a lot of perimeter guys, playing from three-point line. I know. Obviously, you're capable of shooting threes. I know you got the touch. Uh, she's been working that right hook since you got in the league, and that's automatic now. But um, you know, defensively, um, certain things is that in certain times of the game, they're gonna have to put you in the game when there's a lot of small switching yeah. on the line. What is your mentality going into that, knowing that the game is changing and that you know we're not doing as much back to the basket type yeah. of basketball? I think I think for me, I have a little bit of a step up on most bigs because I'm very fast. I'm very quick for my coordinating <laughs> agile. Man, when it's light, light on his feet. He looks big. He's light on his feet though. Oh, he'll be. Who, He's a big ninja, in a, in a, bro. In a race down the court. Nah, bro. I ain't gonna race him. <laughs> He's a ninja, man. He got light feet. Yeah, I, think, I think for me, I'm a lot quicker. So I think my curve for the shooting part, I have a lot more time to work on that because I can still guard perimeter players and be able to play on both ends of the floor without being able to without having to shoot the ball as much because I can still be on the floor still. Yeah. And I think the biggest key and the biggest thing for big men at the center position is just running the floor and to be able to keep up with the pace of the game. And he said he's, he's young, he's still got it, and he's moving. He said he's moving fast. So I think he'll be able to adapt and adjust, you know, perfectly. You, you talked about the Remy workouts. I, I, yeah. I, I'm always on social media. I'll be looking through. Gucci man pulled up to the Remy workouts. Is that true? <laughs> Did, he, did you ask him to get on your album, too? No, I didn't <laughs> my, album. Yo. I, my, my, 
to get in the music thing. At my first one, I didn't want to put any big features. I could have. I mean, mm-hmm. I had, I have some in my phone of big features I have. I didn't want to put them out. Okay. I feel like uh-huh. a lot of people be like, man, you know, why'd you go that route? Why don't you just put your own stuff out? So uh-huh. I just dropped stuff up with some of my friends and put it out. I got caught Respect off guard. It. I got caught off guard because I was like looking through the track list and I saw like, I was hazy. Yeah. I was hazy this morning. So it was like, I saw something dog and it said, I thought it was Snoop Dogg. No, Snap Dogg. I got Snap Dogg. <laughs> Who's Snap Dogg? Snap Dogg from Detroit. <laughs> he's a Detroit rapper. Okay. Mm. Yeah, he's uh, up and coming right now. Big time, big time artist out there. And uh, you know, I added him because I didn't want to use, I could have used a mainstream. I could have used T Grizzly, could have used Days Low. Yeah. I was like, you know, I want to use somebody that's. Days Low would have been cool. Yeah. yeah I, I like they all would have been cool. But yeah. Not Snap Dogg. That's what you need right there. Yeah, so I wanted somebody from the inner city, like what the city would respect. So That's dope. That's I can appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, now, there's some other rappers, basketball players. Let's say Zoe. I'm not a fan. Oh, <laughs> you're not a fan. It's a style of rapper. Or, or, or what? Okay, what's the deal? Just, you got some rap beef? He try to sound too tough, man. He's too light skinned. Ah, okay. He's too light skinned. Yeah, he's too light skinned to sound like that. I'll, I'll be sure to bring him to class and just teach him the light skinned ways. <laughs> yeah, then he teach you the right <laughs> way. <laughs> your, your 16s can't be too tough, bro. You have know what I'm saying? I mean, he got he got some hard stuff. But I just think yeah. like what he's talking about is like it's not, not him. It's, yeah. Okay, yeah. I I understand. Dre, you about to uh, take off here. So just one more thing. Uh, looking forward to the season. I know you're not happy about Blake Griffin's 86 2K ranking. Uh, <laughs> that was actually a joke. People ran with it. <laughs> Not a 80, he's not an 86, nah, though. He's not 86. He's not 86. But you already know how that 2K stuff goes, mm-hmm. man. You know, everybody is already looking forward to what, what number anybody is, but that doesn't define you as a player. So I have fun with him. People talk trash to me about a 2K game. I'm like, bro, I play in real life. You playing with me in a video game, I don't care. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> or, real quick, so Blake Griffin, you, yep. uh, hopefully Reggie Jackson's healthy this, this he season. He looks good. He looks good. I was just with him. He looks good. Yeah, How? I, what do you foresee you guys doing? Obviously, Danny could have been coached by Dwayne Casey yeah. if he stayed there, but now he's your head coach. What do you foresee? I and mean, Danny, what do you foresee as a yeah, competitor have you, have against you him? Have met him yet? And, uh, yeah, uh, I've, uh, I've spent a lot of time with Dwayne. I think okay. I've spoke to him this entire week. Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, you think uh, good relationship? You think it's going to be yeah, a good yeah. fit? Yeah, I think he's going to be good for us. He's uh, He communicates a lot. You okay. know, with anything that he has an idea with, he calls me right away. I'm like, what uh-huh. do you think about this? You know, I think it's that's, pretty cool. I've never had that, you know. Mm, with, yeah, that's with dope. Previous, previous staff, I haven't had somebody call me as much, ask me what my opinion is. Usually it's just like, this is what we're doing. You need to be here. This is what we're doing. This is what's happening. So it's pretty cool to have an input on, you know, what goes on with that's that dope. That's dope. So that, that, that's for me, too, I've never had a co- coaching staff change or anything. I had the same coach pretty much yeah. during my whole career, okay. basically. So it's a big change, you know what I'm saying? The relationship with Coach Nurse, they said it's, it's, it's different from Pop, but I, I like it. But we'll talk to him, you know, and you know, input some things. So I'm looking forward to it, man. The East is going to be it's gonna be exciting, it's even gonna be though, fun. yeah, I think it's going to be, be fun, fun, for sure. We didn't get Danny's Eastern Conference picks. We'll get it later. <laughs> and we'll, I'll make sure I'll let you know, Dre, what he yeah, says. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got them up there. Detroit's good, man. Guys. Detroit is definitely up there. You kidding me? All right, Dre. if they stay healthy. But they said they got Dwayne. He's a good coach, man. Um, regardless of the situation of what happened last year and how they let him go, but he knows what he's doing. They've got great pieces over there. So as long as they said the healthiest team, usually the one that, that does well, if they stay healthy, they're gonna be they're yep. gonna be really good. Dre, we appreciate you coming on. And Thanks Danny, for having me. Man. Yeah, man, appreciate and, you taking the time, brother. Sure. And I, and Danny, he's gonna probably challenge you to three point shooting competition. I'm gonna challenge. I'm gonna get on the booth. We gotta get a battle. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get my bars right. You know what I'm <laughs> but yeah, man, good luck with everything. Stay healthy. Um, good luck with the album, man. The next one, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna be bumping it all day. I gotta, I'm saying, I gotta I got some all stuff on there, man. I think uh, the difference between me and most people, my music's for everybody. Yeah, it's a party. It's a party album. I enjoyed it. I, I, that yeah, pa- that past song was good. Yeah. Yeah. Girlfriend song was good. Parachute. Uh, I, I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> I, I could be your hype man. I could be your hype good man. Good luck, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, brother. Appreciate it, guys. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right. Down Four is a new social media app where users can find events in their area and interact with other attendees. Create a profile. Follow friends. Post pictures. Videos win points, and most importantly, have fun when you download the new down app, available on iPhone and Android. Welcome back into Inside the Green Room with Danny Green. It's yep. been a fun show. We've had Andre Drummond on, Ryan Shazier's been on, uh, but Danny, since we've talked about music and you like to tell stories, yeah, I, yeah. you told me about this video on YouTube of <laughs> Delonte West, your yeah. former teammate, yeah. 
My man was busting a freestyle outside of the KFC draft through. Yeah, so long <laughs> what, time ago, what, man. What, what's going on with it? What, what, what was going on in those man, days with Delonte? Man, the first time I met Delonte was very interesting. Um, he's a good dude, great, great teammate. Uh, an interesting guy for sure. An interesting character, man. But um, you know, he was in the industry. He obviously was in his mind. He's in the music industry. He had a studio. He, he was good at what he did. He liked the freestyle. He had a studio in the crib or like, yeah, like somewhere. Well, and we were at, we were in apartment buildings. Well. Yeah, basically apartments. So um, he had a studio there, but um, you'd always catch him doing random stuff, bus, just spinning freestyles random times. And I guess he took it to the net, man, during that time. But I said, I remember my first couple interactions with him, man. It was just like, are we, did I, am I in the NBA right now? What's going on? <laughs> like, what's going on here? Like, you know, randomly walking in the building and, you know, he just comes out in like a, a scully cap and a, a bubble jacket. Like, are we out the hood now, Joe? And I'm like, what the, is that Delonte? <laughs> And uh, yeah, man. Just, he didn't. He didn't. Man. He didn't fit. He fit out more than fit in. Is, is for that, for sure. But um, so I learned a lot from that guy. I mean, like, I can't say uh, I didn't. Uh, he's a great dude, great teammate. But um, I'm sure as we get along, we'll get into some more Delonte stories. Did he? Uh, I mean, me did he tell you about? Rookie. Did he tell you about like busting a freestyle at KFC? He just would do it. Nah, he didn't tell me about it. <laughs> but he he would tell me about him being. He trying to get me in the studio. Come on, Joe, get down here. We make this music. And him and his brothers, you know, they had a little studio going, a little studio session going on. And um, did you ever like? Okay, dude, this is like one of the hardest conversations you gotta have with like teammates uh-huh. and friends. Uh huh. Did you ever tell him like? All right, first of all, like, was he nice to you? Like, did you think he got yeah, bars? He was, he was nice. To, no, you mean as, as a rapper? <laughs> I, I, mean, I thought he was creative. I thought he was creative, man. It was, it was different. Um, so yeah, did you he, tell him, he, like, you creative, bro? I don't, like, know if you he, got... I, yeah, I don't know if he took it serious, but he okay. had fun with it, you know? And, That's fair. Um, but he, he was creative, man. And uh, I said, I learned so much from Delonte, man. It's crazy. The stories that I have go on for days. But I said, my rookie year, um, he made it. Very interesting, and um, a lot of times I had to race him home just to get my own parking spot because um, he had so many cars. And you he'd know, bully clearly, your parking spot. Yeah, yeah, you want your parking spot, you gotta beat me home, Joe. So uh, <laughs> you know stuff like that, man. But um, he would just put your, his car in your parking uh, he spot. He had like eight cars, man, or something like that. And <laughs> what's the best car he had? I, I don't know. He, I know he had an Audi, he had a Audi truck, and he had like a some muscle car that was really fast. But in Cleveland, it snows, so it gets cold. You have to have a garage, and you only mm-hmm. get so many parking spots in the garage. So mm. um, he left one car outside. I think it just froze out there one time. But, um, yeah, he braced me home to t- take my parking spot, man. I, that's one of the things. That, and I also, as a rookie. You can't, and you can't buck at it. I had to give him. So as a rookie, you have to hand out everything for all the guys. You know, these guys need their shoes, their gear. Medi- what's, the equi- what's the equipment manager for? Uh, well, the rookie duties. You know, so <laughs> along the lines of everything, I was a team assistant. So whether it was <laughs> I said shoes, gear, or medication, I had to, I had to hand it out. Like Tylenol, like you know, you know. But Delonte, that during that man it was funny, man. But so so he really introduced me to the NBA being around that guy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll save that for another episode. That yeah. sounds like for sure, episode. for sure. I got stories for days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's get let's get into the mailbox. One of the uh, questions that we got in the mailbox, one of our uh, audience members wanted to know, what are good shows to mm-hmm. watch with your significant other in mind? Oh, don't say The Bachelor because... No, nah, I don't watch that. But, yeah, it's not happening um, over here. There's a lot of... So it depends on what you're into. You know, um, I like a lot of mystery, suspense, uh, you know, detective type shows. Like uh, The Killing was good for me. And you got to find like a girl who could ride with you for detective. these shows. Yeah, some people that... I mean, some some that I guess I like the that are not sc- I don't think they're scary, but they're more suspense. And okay. I got some parts. Um, the Sinner was really good. Um, Jessica Biel was in season one. Season two was just now. You had out. a crush on her, didn't you? Uh, uh, a high school when I was crush younger, on her? probably, but not as much as the others. But uh, I oh, produ- I I'm just yeah, I'm just okay. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't? She's a beautiful girl, you know. Some, but she made a good show. Um, okay, can I interrupt a question to ask another question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Biggest high school crush. That's that's hard to say. It's so long. High school so long ago now. You um, know your first crush back bro. then. It, there was many different from like, you know, J Lo when she was younger. Hey, J Lo's yeah. still a crush she's now, still, bro. She's still, you know, she still got. But back I then, mean, I know so you got a girl. You know, so you can't it, say it was too much. different. Yeah, back then it was very different. Yeah, I, have, I have a crush on her. And um, so, uh, so there's so many along the line. Like, even like randoms. You know, even Shanti was coming up big. Shanti like, was, was big. There was a bunch of other people, actors and actresses people liked. You know, Halle Berry. And, um, She's from Cleveland. Did you know that? Yeah, I did know that actually yeah. when I was there. I oh, found that out when I got there. Oh, did you try and pull up on her? No, I don't think she was there. <laughs> when I was there, but <laughs> yeah. 
So, I said a lot of different uh, actors, actresses, uh, people looked up to when you're younger, artists, mm. you know, or singers, you know, dancers, um, you know, so. I, I'm, I'm sorry Who to knows? our viewer, whoever asked, asked that question. You're going to leave those alone for now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, back into the mailbag, the mailbox. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, what was the question? <laughs> it was your favorite TV show. You named a couple. Yeah, I named a couple. Um, yeah. I think, you know, a lot of females like to watch you know, Scandal. How to Get with Murder was another one. Um, so you got the stomach for those shows. You good with those. I mean, I watch all shows. I have the stomach nice. for everything. I mean, nice. I guess n- okay. none of those shows are really gory. Um, some of them, not m- many of them are. Power, obviously, is a good one now. Everybody likes Power. Um, but Game of Thrones is probably my top one right now of how it's come together. If she doesn't um, watch Game of Thrones, can she be your girl? That's tough. That's tough. Um, She's gonna have to at some point. <laughs> She's gonna have to at some point. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, more basketball-related question. One of our fans wanted to know: Is you said it before? Toronto is one of the best cities in this world. Oh, I yeah, believe sure. it's one of the best cities in this world too. Nothing was the same after I visited about two years ago. The words Drake. <laughs> um, but people want to know why is Toronto getting turned down for the most part from the big time free agents. I don't think they're getting turned down. I just think that um, well, it's hard to put. I think a lot of people, the only things, the downfalls to me or the disadvantages is just that it's out the country. Um, the travel of getting to and from, getting in and out, and going through customs every time that you travel. And the taxes. You know, guys hear about the taxes and how it's different. And just being enough to set Canadian money using, you know, out of the country type things. Whether Metric it's system. Kilometers, you know. Celsius. I'm not ready for all that. Kilos. You know what I'm saying? You're not using pounds. You're not using American money anymore. So it's a little different, and it's a little cold at times. But if you're used to it, it's an amazing city. So, um, but I don't think they're getting turned down. I, don't, I haven't seen them really go for many big stars yet. Um, but you know. It's a city I think more people are probably opening up to the idea of. Um, and I think it's usually because now a lot of guys are chasing the teams that are more likely to win a ring. So it's like most guys are going to the teams they feel like are already established. If that's the case, then Toronto is a destination now, right? Now it could be, yeah, in the East. But a lot of teams are going West because they feel they're stronger teams and they have a better chance of winning. But, um, yeah, so if, if it was like back in the day where guys just wanted to compete against each other, like, you know, instead of joining each other. From your own houses. Yeah, yeah. so I think... (laughs) It's like Game of Thrones. Toronto would be, you know, definitely an ideal destination for a lot of guys where they can easily build their own team franchise and take it to the finals and then, you know, win one probably. But so a lot of guys are just, you know, they want to go, especially older vets, they come toward the end of their career. It's it's surprising to see some of the younger all-stars, you know, team up. But older vets, I understand. You know, you want to get a ring before you retire or get out of the league. But, you know... A lot of guys are going west and going to teams that they feel are are already established and have a great shot at winning. Final question. You're a Toronto Raptor now. You're dealing with a new head coach. Mm -hmm. Probably give you, you feel that you might get more freedom or more say in the offense. One of our uh, audience members Uh, wanted to know. I don't know about say in the offense, but I have probably more freedom. (laughs) But go ahead. There you go. Uh, One of our audience members wanted to know what, did you ever feel like a robot and you could, that could be a good or a bad thing you ever yeah. feel like a robot with the Spurs like Robert Horry said he felt like at one point in San Antonio uh, I wouldn't say a robot but um it's kind of harsh yeah yeah I mean I said it, it could be taken many different ways um but I feel like that at times in any situation any job things can get repetitive sometimes things can be put in a different type of you know circumstance or way shape or form that makes you feel like you know, you're kind of doing the same thing over and over you're there for just one particular job or one particular thing or they let you only do certain particular things so within that system and you know san antonio um i guess guys can be can feel that way depending on but they allow you you know they want you to play toward your strengths and it's not like they say oh well, say, they don't they, want you they, trying to break down people outside. They, they don't want you. Yeah, they don't want you doing stuff outside of your box, basically. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, I see what he's saying, but it seems smart. You want to be successful, and when the team is successful, you guys play toward your strength. They know, you know, what you're good at, and they're gonna use you for what you're good at, and you know, let the other guys do what they're good at. They found this guy to do this, and they found this guy to do that. So, you know, let those guys do what they do, and then you know, you win some games. But um, I understand where he's coming from and how you may feel, and, but um. And said, at any time in any system, you could probably feel like a robot. And I wouldn't say it was often I felt like a robot, but uh, at times you can feel like you're in a box where you're just 
this is my job, so I'm supposed to be doing it. Spot up, stay here, wait for the corner three, or mm-hmm. you know, play defense. Obviously, everybody's gonna do that, but offensively, yeah, they don't really let you just go out there and express Freelance. express your game. So, okay, I, I understand where he's coming from when he says that, but I didn't feel like a robot. No, I'm gonna say that. So, what we're gonna do here on the podcast, Danny, on the next one at least, we're gonna let you mm-hmm. open your game up. Yeah. So we're gonna let you bust a freestyle next time. Uh, all right. Hot sixteen. I'll give you my, maybe like six. Maybe like six bars. Probably like four. Beat. I'll give the beat. I give you. I got a, some beats like on layaway too that we can. Okay. We can I give you a hot four. <laughs> some dylon, dylon, dylon. You know. And dylon. That's it. Top five right there. Best podcasts. Inside the green room. Inside the green room. Inside the green yeah, room. Yeah. And inside that, the green that's room. It. <laughs> Top five. Inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, we gotta get Dylan on the pod now. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that guy at, man? I don't know. <laughs> All right, uh, we gotta go. It's been a fun one. Thank you to Amjad Osman, our producer, Danny Green, obviously, Ryan Shazier, yeah. Andre Drummond. This was a fun one. Yeah, we also want to thank the and the National Basketball Players Association for letting us tape this podcast in this beautiful facility at Basketball City yeah. back in New York. And uh, we'll be back in a while. Episode four should be fun as too. I hope you enjoyed episode three. Yep. Stay Danny, tuned. You got anything for them? Nah, stay tuned. See you guys next time.